Bow. What's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean and today we are going over part two of the rise of rust and also addressing some of this industry plan conspiracy stuff because a lot of people keep asking and I gotta admit I'm kind of annoyed doing this video in the first place. I recorded these two videos like three months and then I had to re-record them like two or three times because new information and things that I said would be happening started to happen so of course I got to put these examples in the video so anyway let's hop into it number one choose your story now this is something that Russ does extremely well and it's important for artists to be able to do this Russ he says the same thing over and over again it's pretty much like fuck the industry then you hear him say hey I could do a concert with like 10,000 people and only about five other people could do that in LA and the reason this is important is because we're in an age where you can have an hour-long interview people will take five seconds snippets and then all of a sudden they'll just have some bullshit story that they put out about you people say the same thing when they go to different radio stations not just because they're being asked the same questions but also there's something that they want people to know and take away number two Russ has basically decided to become a poster child for the narrative of fuck the industry the positive part about that for him is there's always gonna be people who feel like fuck the industry no matter what side there is. The great part about that for Russ is once you position yourself to be a spokesperson for those people, y'all automatically have something to gather around and fight against, which is, in this case, the industry. But the interesting part about that is polarization. In his Everyday Struggle interview, he actually said that, hey, he studied the game and he's seen that there's no characters like an Eminem who's like calling people out in today's age. So he wants to represent that. So the interesting part about this whole polarization thing, if you haven't ever seen my unique pairing and polarization video, then you know that what makes it so powerful after you have these people who make bold statements, a telltale sign is people People calling them hypocrites all of a sudden but it creates additional conversation stronger love and stronger hate and what you've seen with Russ lately now people are starting to call him hypocrites once he started talking about the whole fuck lean and drugs the result is people bringing up these old tweets where Russ is saying I need some lean or I need some drugs and Russ has said that they're fake tweets but we don't know that for sure but that's the kind of stuff that happens anyway when you breed haters right you're breeding these people that hate you because you're always attacking people and you can't be out there attacking people all all the time and expect motherfuckers not to attack back which brings to more uncovering of this whole manipulation and industry plant accusations on Kanye Tiller they're talking about it a lot lately how Russ's dad is the owner of a marketing agency and they're supposedly in bed together with Russ's record label and that was possibly how Russ got his deal and stuff like that and of course people are pushing a lot heavier on the whole CAA relationship and just the things that I alluded to in my first video with the downplay relationship with Kara Lewis and people are constantly using facts like these to push the narrative A of Russ being an industry plant. But the interesting thing about Russ is when you think about it, he talks about it more than anybody else. So he seems to be at the forefront of defining what that is. And he usually defines it by record labels. So any of that other back end support that he may or may not have had still in his mind wouldn't define him as an industry plant. Now what I can say industry plant or not is I talked to a blogger who's known Russ for he said like 10 years. The guy basically said Russ is like an a-hole and he also called Russ a trust fund kid who basically hasn't really ever had to pay for his own videos and things like that. The whole point of mentioning that is when you look at the timing of the fact that hey Russ has gotten a lot more media coverage lately but the media coverage was primarily met with him attacking the media in general so now you're starting to see all this other information come out this other stuff leaking. Some of this stuff coming out also includes accusations of articles about Russ not being an industry plant being planted articles so people don't think he's an industry plant. This is the kind of shit that you're up against when you're fighting and attacking media. Do I know if there's a conspiracy against him? Nope, I'll wait and see. Do I know if he's lying? Hmm, I'll wait and see. But when it comes to his fans, a lot of people who were pro-Russ because he was all anti-establishment probably would be turned off to find out that he was lying the whole time if he is lying. Other than that, I'm glad to be done with the last video on Russ I plan to do for a long time. And until then, we'll just have to wait and see if he's 1000% real or the most organic industry plant of all time. That's it. Y'all know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.